When we solve the problem of the free particle, we also mention that these continuous states, even though that they don't diverge, they are not physical solutions to the problem. We kind of have the idea of finding the particle with the probability of 4 at a certain region and of the probability of 7 at a certain region. They cannot be normalized and not physical. But we also left off in saying that we can find physical solutions by taking a linear position of these, linear combination of these plane waves so that we will localize the wave solution and end up with a wave packet. This wave packet can be used to represent the particle. So for today's lesson, it's an explicit example on how are we going to find a wave packet to show that really what we talk about actually makes some sense. So we want to discuss a wave packet solution. Now we need some integration results because we're going to do a lot of integration. So basically integrate minus infinity to infinity of these transcendental equations would give us square root pi and square root 2 pi divided by 8. So for a free particle, we can construct physical solutions by means of a linear superposition of plane waves and it's otherwise known as a Fourier transform, I so mentioned that. So what we have is that the wave function psi is equal by a certain constant and we're going to integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity of this function over here which we denoted as psi k and then we'll take the solutions for a certain wave number k multiplied by that function and integrate with respect to the wave number k from minus infinity to infinity. Now we don't know what this number is or what this function uh, phi, what this function phi k is. Well, we can pick certain functions to really construct the wave packet. But a common one is what we call as the Gaussian wave packet. It's given as phi k is equal to a, a constant multiplied by e, and this uh, argument over here, minus a squared, uh, open brackets, k minus k naught squared, divided by 4. I've sketched the probability density of this function phi k over here like this, and we can have an idea of what the, the function is. Now, your immediate conclusion might be to think that this Gaussian wave packet is representing the particle because after all, it looks like a nice probability density function. We can see that it's normalized and if we normalize it, you know, maybe we can use it to represent the particle. But I must tell you right now that we cannot be too quick to link this Gaussian wave packet to the particle because remember, the solutions to the Schrodinger equation represents the particle and it's given by psi. This is just another function. It looks nice, but there's no immediate link right now. What we maybe want to take out from this or from the function is that when we pick a certain wave number k, we will get a certain number, right, given by the, the, the function phi k. That, is, that number is going to be the amplitude of the solution to the showing the equation that corresponds to the same number k, as you can see over here. Pick a k, we get the amplitude, we multiply the solution for a certain value of k by the amplitude and we integrate for all wave numbers so that the plane waves would interfere constructively at the finite region and destructively elsewhere. So that is what it is. This is just telling us that you pick a wave number k, you get the amplitude and use it for the Fourier transform. Now, before we want to immediately plug this inside here, we want to normalize the wave packet. Uh, we can, I will tell you now that because if we will normalize the Gaussian wave packet, the solution of our wave packet that we're trying to find psi is also going to be normalized. And also because normalizing is, is quite a quick process. So what we get is, um, one, the normalizing condition is, by the way, you basically just integrate the probability density in terms of k from minus infinity to infinity, equate that to 1, as I've done over here. And then since, you know, we have this thing, this messy argument, what we'll let is that we'll let z equals to k minus k naught. And then that would give us um, dk, dz equals to dk. So the differential dk doesn't change. And then what we ultimately get is that I'll get a vector of a squared. I'll integrate that from minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus, uh, minus two, minus a squared, I'll get a z squared divided by that by two. And I'll integrate with respect to z. As you can see, the differential terms doesn't change. Now this would give me, using that result over there, as a, as a square root 2 pi divided by a. And then after that, I'll just rearrange for a and I'll ultimately get a, a is equal to a squared divided by 2 pi, but I'll do that and I'll raise it to the power of 1 quarter. 1 quarter as we can see over here, like that. So this is normalizing constant. All we want to do is that we find a normalizing constant for our Gaussian wave packet. And when I plug this inside here and, and I want to integrate the whole thing, I would get 1. So our Gaussian wave packet now becomes basically, you put in this normalizing constant, which is a squared divided by 2 pi, and you take that to the power of a quarter, e to the minus a squared k minus k naught squared divided by 4. Okay, and then now we can carry out the Fourier transform. Normalize the Gaussian wave packet first. Normalize the function phi that we're going to use for our Fourier transform before we carry out the integration for our Fourier transform. Okay, and let's do that now. 
We'll simplify matters a bit by calculating the weight packet at the time t equals to zero. So as you can see, what we have now is basically psi zero at time t equals to zero is equals to one divided by square root of two pi integrate minus infinity to infinity of the Gaussian wave packet. And I don't have that energy value, value anymore because I am um, et divided by h bar. So now t is equals to zero, there's no energy value. And that's equal by this thing over here. Okay, remember we normalize the Gaussian wave packet. The normalizing constant is now outside here. And I would integrate e to the minus a squared multiplied by k minus k naught squared divided by 4 plus this argument over here which is left over there like that. And now comes this difficult method of finding the integral of this. Okay, But we, let's just see what we can draw. Let's see, look at the steps you want. I'll just treat it as a problem of calculating a diff difficult integral.